So one interesting thing is that the color is different on the first three spark plugs that I pulled out versus the second three. It kind of makes me think, that, you know, I bought this Jeep used at 50,000 miles, kind of makes me think that three of them were replaced and three of them are original. Maybe somebody can tell me here in the comments why that is. Hey guys, welcome back to Crawl TV. We're still in the midst of repairing the Jeep after sinking it underwater. I felt like this should be its own video because somebody might want to watch this and not watch the whole recovery. This is how to change the spark plugs on a 2012 and up Jeep JK with the 3.6 liter Pentastar engine. Here we go. Get right down to it. First thing that we're gonna do, pull the negative terminal off the battery here just to cut power. Set this safely aside somewhere. How about right there? I'm also gonna get rid of these little terminal washers. What happened with these is um, they spaced that clamp too high and it tapers upward. So I've actually had a loose negative battery terminal and positive terminal. While I'm under here, I'm just gonna toss these because on the Jeep, it really doesn't help at all. On to step two. The passenger side of this Jeep is a lot easier to get to than the driver's side because the passenger side is actually open. To get to the spark plugs on the driver's side, you have to remove the intake, throttle body, the whole plenum, and then you've got to replace the plenum gaskets just so that you can get in there and pull the coil packs to remove the spark plugs. It's a lot of work. So naturally, we're gonna start with the easy side and uh, we'll pull these three cylinders or spark plugs out of these three cylinders and uh, take a look at what they look like. They, they were definitely oil saturated. Jeep's running fine right now, but it is close to 100,000 miles. So, I mean, it's due time to change them anyways. And we're just gonna see how bad they are after, um, you know, the abuse that this Jeep has been through because this poor thing's had a pretty rough life. So we'll start with removing this vacuum line here that's just connected with like a Christmas tree clip zip tie thing. And we'll just pop that to get it out of the way. And for that, I'm using a clip puller. This thing really comes in handy on the Jeep because there are a lot of little clips. I will leave a link in the description to all the tools I use. So if you guys are doing this, you can at least get what you need for it. But with that out of the way, we can just pull that vacuum line out of the way here. And then with a 10 millimeter, we're gonna pull the three coil packs that we see here on the passenger side. There's the first 10 millimeter. that vacuum line out of the way we can get to the second one and it looks like for the second one I'll take this short extension out should have brought a step stool this Jeep is a lot taller than it used to be probably the only thing making this difficult I think my calves are gonna be burning by the end of this and these little bolts like to stay in the coil um, I'm just pulling them out because I would hate to leave one in the coil and then lose it later. Now number three is back there. I'm definitely going to have to figure out. I'll stand on the tire to get to that one. All right. Ooh. Yeah, back of my legs are going to be burning. Okay, so we got all three there. Now we can pull the coil and boot assembly here up and out here's number one and what i would not recommend doing is what i just did which is drive the vehicle right before you work on it under the hood because everything is like super hot right now and that's not ideal there's the second coil on this side and there's number three once again that vacuum line gets in the way of everything start on the easiest one which is the front spark plug here and we've got a 12 inch extension on a 3 8 drive with a 5 8 spark plug socket. Coming out with ease, which is a good thing. There we go. Let's take a close look at this.
the gap on this, which is an almost a 100,000 mile plug now, it should be 0 0.043. We're gonna check and see what it actually is here. And it is blazing hot. Like I said, not the best time to be working on it. And it's just over 0 0.050. So it has widened a bit, not surprising. There we go. There's number two. So we've got a shorter 3 8 extension with our 5 8 socket. Let's try and get this one. I'm standing on my worn winch. I'm sure it appreciates that. Let's see here. Okay, so this might have to go in in stages. There goes the socket. There's the extension. And now, here's the ratchet. The most frustrating work is when you have to turn something one click of a ratchet at a time. But there's no real good way to get to this thing otherwise. So once it's loose, pull the ratchet and just remove the rest of it. Hand tight. There we go. All right. And that is the third spark plug on the passenger side. So I'm replacing the spark plugs with exactly what was already in it. And that is these Champion Iridium. Um, 9407, is there a part number somewhere on here? 9407, RER 8ZWYCB4s. Um, it's just better to replace what came out of the engine with um, the same thing so that you don't run into any other issues. I know there are like a million different choices, but these have done very well for us for the last 100,000 miles, so hopefully they can give us another 100,000. So first thing we wanna do is check the gap on these. They should be at 0 0.043. And the gap is correct, right at 0 0.043, right where they need to be. So we'll just make sure all of them are that way and we'll proceed to installing these bad boys. Before we throw these spark plugs in, I am gonna throw a little bit of anti-seize right on the threads of the plug, just like it is pictured here. That um, keeps it from seizing up in there, hence the name anti-seize makes it easier for disassembly in the future. So careful with this stuff because it can get everywhere, but we'll grab a new plug and we'll puncture this bottle here. And then very carefully We'll just spread some anti-seize. And that should be good. We'll just do that on all six plugs. And the next thing I wanna put on this Jeep before I put the plugs back in and call it a day is the spark plug boot grease. That'll go into our coil boots here, and it's just a dielectric grease, and it helps um, keep it waterproof and keeps the sensors and everything safe, so pretty easy. Just squirt a little bit in each coil tube here. Once again, we just gotta puncture the bottle, and then we'll just give each one a good squirt. There's one. There's two. 
And number three is hiding back here. There's number three. Okay, we'll save the rest of this for the other side. All right, now, since the back one was the hardest one, we'll start with that first, just to get it out of the way. I gotta climb back up here. Yeah. And we'll just get this. I'm only doing the socket now, and then I'll connect the extension just because it's difficult to get that in there and angled right. We'll get this hand tight, and then you have to tighten these to approximately 13 inch pounds. And what I, what I mean by that is don't over tighten them, but don't leave them loose. It's kind of a happy medium. You just don't want to crank on these things. Uh, it can lead to much bigger problems down the road, like, you know, or, you know, immediately if you strip your cylinder head or something. So be careful with it. All right, got that hand tight. We'll just give it like a quarter to a half turn more. which, remember, this was click by click, so a quarter turn is going to be a few clicks. And that's as accurate as I can get. Pull that out. Oh, socket didn't come with it. Let's go fish for that socket. Come on out. You can't stay in there. All right, got it. Got it, got it, got it. That's a tough one. Okay, now... We'll stick our boot onto that plug, and that's lined up to get bolted back in. We'll move on to the second cylinder in this row here. Okay, get that finger tight. Should be good. We'll go fishing for our socket again. Come on out now, playtime's over. Come on, you can do it. Almost there. There we go. Okay, now second coil boot can go back on. There we go. Two down, one to go on this side. Here's number three. This one was the easiest one. So, going in, hand tight. There it is. Right. That's good right there. Yep. Socket out, coil boot back in. All right, now all we gotta do is put those 10 millimeter bolts back in, resecure our vacuum line. The passenger side of this Jeep is done. We'll move over to the driver's side. Ouch. Ouch. Ooh, ow. Guys, take a look at this. I just caught my wedding ring on the side of the fender and that felt like it was about to rip my finger off. You can see the ring is pointed. Holy crap, that hurt. Okay, it's time to go back to Kalos anytime I work on the Jeep. That really, really hurt. These little 10 millimeter coil bolts will go back in. You know what's funny about almost degloving my finger just now is that today is actually Grace. <laughs> it's our fourth wedding anniversary today, me and Grace. So kind of funny day to do that. That really hurt though. My finger hurts. So I have Kalo rings at home. I usually wear them. 
but I'm not always working on the Jeep these days. I didn't think about it today when I left the house because I'm doing this behind an auto parts store. And that just goes to show that if you do catch it on something, it doesn't take much, it cause a lot of damage. All right, so those three 10 millimeter bolts are back in. We'll just pop this vacuum line back on right here to this bracket over the valve cover. All right, let's move over to the driver's side and tackle the real project of the day. All right, guys, so like I mentioned, the driver's side is much more difficult than the passenger side. We have to remove the full plenum throttle body, uh, plenum gaskets, a whole bunch of stuff to get to it. Let's dive into that now. I'm expecting it's probably gonna take easily 45 minutes because I'm doing it in a parking lot. I just had to take a quick commercial break because the lawn mowing guy came to O'Reilly's and was mowing and leaf blowing right around the Jeep and it was really loud. But here we go, let's jump into the driver's side. Okay, so first thing, let me climb up here. Hey yeah. All right. Back up on top of the winch. First three bolts that we're gonna remove are these long eight millimeter bolts right here on the top of the plenum. And they are very, very long. Here's number one. Number two. And number three. Okay, with that out of the way, we can pop these two plastic clips on the back side of the plenum here. There's actually a hidden bolt right next to them that we have to get to, so we'll move that foam out of the way as soon as these pop out. There's one of them. There's the other one. Those are 10 millimeters. And here's my 10. Let's pull those out. These out of the way. And there's a lot of stuff connected to this plenum. You've got your map sensor here that's got to get disconnected. You've got a another clip you got to pop here on the front of it. So I popped this clip off, removed the connector to the map sensor here, and then popped another clip off right here. Now there's one more right here that I got to get off. And it's still not really in a good shot for you. There we go. So this one will pop off. Also brittle, so th all three of them have snapped. I'll end up replacing those. We've got two, looks like 10 millimeter bolts there we'll pull out. So once again, grab this ratchet. We'll get those out of the way. There's one of them. Okay, what else do we have? We have a connector here. We're gonna have to remove this. This is a vacuum line. And we got two vacuum lines over here we're gonna have to remove. We'll start with these ones, I guess. There we go. There's the first one. This one's gonna be a little more difficult because it's a lot bigger. There we go. Got both of those pulled off. We've got our axle breather tube snapped in over here. We'll unsnap that. These vacuum lines unsnap from the plenum here. Okay, so that's good. I'm removing the connector from our air intake temperature sensor right now, but gotta do this carefully because I don't wanna break a sensor trying to change my spark plugs, you know? So do it with a little finesse. There we go, that's disconnected. What I'm gonna do is remove, this is not a flathead, but it'll work as one right now. Just don't wanna climb down and then back up. You know what, I have an eight millimeter. That'll work better. Okay, let's 
pull this intake tube out of the way. It's got a bunch of oil in it because the engine was on its side. That's not stuff I want to be sucking in, so I'll get that cleaned out. Yuck. And before I put this back in, um, hopefully we'll have no... Oh, there goes a hose clamp. When I get this put back in, hopefully it'll have no oil in it, because that's something I don't want to just be ingesting into a new set of spark plugs. What else do we have on this thing? Okay, we still have this sensor here, but after pulling the intake tube, I can actually reach it. So, I'll try and finesse this a little bit now. I do not want to break something. There we go. We are successfully disconnected there. And then this clip that holds the wiring on, um, looks like it should just pop off. Yeah, it's just one of those little alligator clips. So it's a little bit stubborn. Got it off. So we've got air intake temperature sensor, throttle body, and map sensor unplugged. Push all that aside. We've got two more 10 millimeter bolts back here. Let's get those out. Not bolts, these are 10 millimeter nuts. Stand corrected. Okay, Whew. now, what do we have left here? We have a bunch of T20 Torx bits. That need to come out. So I've got a T20 on a driver. Those T20s are located on the far side of the plenum here. We'll see how many there are as we go through them. Looks like they're right along here. Is there one back there hiding somewhere? Probably. Um, let's see. I'd be willing to bet that there's another one hiding. But there are two more 10 millimeter bolts holding the harness on here that we're gonna have to remove. Let's get those out. So we got these. They just look like you know, screws, so set these aside. So far we've removed four big screws like that and four nuts, unplugged a bunch of stuff. We pulled these three millimeters out. Um, we got the two, or sorry, one, two, three, four, five of the T20 Torx bits pulled. This hose is still connected here and that's, I'll show you guys. This hose is still connected, that's one thing I have to fiddle with a little bit. I just don't want to create a vacuum leak um, by marring up the hose. I just got to carefully kind of twist and pull here. We've got two more clips that we have to pop off that are holding the harness to the plenum over here. I took a second to look at things. Here's what we've got left. This piece, now that we've removed those 10 millimeter screws, this foam piece can come out. All right, we'll set that aside. Uh, we've got two 10 millimeter nuts that we have to remove to get the heater core hard lines um, kind of out of the way for us. And those are over here on the passenger side. There's one 10 millimeter nut. So now we're up to five that we've got set aside. Here's number six. All right, there we go. Now, I think that there actually is one more um, T20 Torx bit back there hiding. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so that one's gonna be a little bit harder to reach. I'm gonna try and put a short extension on a quarter inch ratchet with a T20 bit and see if I can get that one back there. 
classic hard to reach bolt. Always run into those. All right, so this is what I'm, the setup I'm gonna try here. See if this works. I think it would be easier to reach this one with a swivel socket and an eight millimeter than trying the T20. I know I have one of those somewhere, but I'm using everything in my trail bag. It's all hard to find. I've already got this out. I'll make this work, but when I put it back together, I'll probably try that route. Okay, that's fully loosened. And um, at this point, I should have a loose plenum. Make sure every bolt is undone. There are two bolts that I loosened that I didn't need to. Those are for the lower intake. Um, we're only removing the upper intake here, so those can actually go back once, I'm, once I can pull all this out. So I just gotta get some stuff out of the way here, I think. I should be able to pop this thing up and out. Um, I still have this hose connected over here. Same one I haven't been able to get to. So that's the one that runs over to our brake booster. Um, I guess I'll pull that out, and then once I get this hose disconnected, I'll try and pull the whole plenum off. There we go. That's the last one I had to pull off. Now, plenum should be able to come out. So let's let's get it pulled out. I've got to pull it from the pass passenger side first because it's kind of pushed into these little clips over here. Um, it's got to come up and then out. Just gotta move everything that I can first. There we go. All right. And the reason that we did all that hard work is because right under this piece of foam are the three spark plugs we need to get to. <laughs> all of that for that. I'm gonna go ahead and stuff some paper towels down in these intake tubes. I don't want anything falling into them. There's a lot of brittle plastic from these clips and stuff that's kind of hanging around here, a bunch of dirt. And uh, these six O-rings are what will replace, these ones seem fairly uh, malleable, but what happens is they get hard and they crack and you get vacuum leaks and stuff in your intake. So we'll get those six replaced after we change the plugs. I use these shop rags for literally everything, from cleaning the Jeep to stuffing the intake, wiping my own hands. Sometimes I even use them in the house. I wash the windows on the Jeep with them. They're freaking awesome because they're really heavy duty. They're not like paper towels and they don't leave any paper residue behind. So they're absorbent of oil. I accidentally just put some oil on this, which is fine because there's oil in the intake right now, unfortunately. But now nothing can fall in there and get farther into the intake. If you guys can see, there's a bolt here, a bolt here, and yeah, those are the two bolts. I accidentally like loosened these two bolts, but I didn't need to. So before I forget, I'm gonna tighten those back up with that T20. That way we can just proceed happily. Those are for the lower part of the intake and we don't need to pull that for any reason. Here's the other one. There we go. Okay, now these right here. Um, I had a flathead screwdriver one second ago and it's gone. I'll use the pry tool again. These O-rings can come out. We've got replacements for them. Well, with the upper intake removed, this is so accessible, so easy to do. Same as the other side, we're gonna remove these 10 millimeter bolts here. And that one is actually still gonna prove to be a huge pain in my butt. And we'll remove this one here. earlier to get that middle one. See if this works. Yep, 
So for that middle one, you're going to have to use a quarter inch drive and a uh, shallow socket in order to get in there. This big bracket's in the way right here. I'm going to wipe all this stuff down really quick. It's just really dusty. You know, this is a place that you never really get to clean because it's under the intake. I just don't want anything falling down the tubes when I pull these. So we'll just wipe it down a bit. One, two, and three. There's a dead bug right there. Try and keep anything from falling down in the tube, like I just said. Now we can pull these plugs, get on with our day. Getting that middle one might be interesting. This is why when everybody says, oh, you just need to pull your plugs and purge all the water out while we're out on the trails, I go, yeah, that's not happening. Because it takes forever to get to these things on the driver's side. And luckily I knew when it went underwater that it didn't have water in the intake because the airbox was dry. So I knew I wasn't gonna hydro lock it. All the water was in the crankcase. And I knew that I just had to drain the oil to get all the water out of the crankcase. Um, but now that it's ingested a bunch of oil and stuff because it was on its side and kind of purging oil into the intake through the PCV and stuff, yeah, now it's time to get to it. What's going on here? Yeah, that one just wasn't tight. Wow, it's crazy. Okay, one more to go. That's better. Okay, there's the final spark plug that's been pulled out. We'll replace these three, and uh, then we gotta put all this stuff back together. So one interesting thing is that the color is different on the first three spark plugs that I pulled out versus the second three. It kind of makes me think, that, you know, I bought this Jeep used at 50,000 miles. Kind of makes me think that three of them were replaced and three of them are original. They all look like they've kind of endured the same amount of abuse. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe these three just get hotter. I couldn't tell you, but um, yeah, there is a pretty drastic change between the first three and second three. Maybe somebody can tell me here in the comments why that is. All right, same thing as last time. We're going to use silicone grease. That was my head hitting the little dong, dong, dong spring thing. Uh, silicone grease here it's to um, put in our coil pack tubes, just like that. And that pretty much uses up that whole little tube just now. Now we'll put the spark plugs in. 5 8 spark plug socket and an extension and we'll just start with the back one here. Okay. That should be good. On to the next one. This is the one that wasn't even tight. I mean, I could have just unthreaded it with my hand, which is concerning. So we'll make sure that it actually goes in all the way. There we go. Okay. That should be good. And one more. Okay. Yep, that's good. 
Now we can put the coil on boot plugs right back in here. There's one, two, and three. On this side, I decided to just leave these little 10 millimeter bolts in. They seem to be pretty secure, so um, I wasn't really worried about them falling out. Probably should have just done that on the passenger side as well. My 10 milli. 10 milli, 10 milli. Second one. And there's that middle one. All tight, spark plugs are changed. Plenum just needs to go back on before we do that. Like I said, we're gonna replace these plenum gaskets now. So let's get that underway and then we'll put it all back together. The gaskets that I have are Felpro, part number MS97205, inside of this box. We just have a bag of O-rings, and inside this bag of O-rings is what we need to put back on top where we pulled those old gaskets out. So, here we go. Let's pop these things back in. Okay, we've got our gaskets back in. Now we can pull the towels out of the intake tubes. That's a pretty important step. And since these things are so durable, I'm seriously going to save these and reuse them for the next oil change because I still have one left. Like they're, they got plenty of life in them. They're really, really sturdy towels. Guys, I've made a terrible mistake. Well guys, I made a pretty dumb mistake. I got most of it reassembled and then realized that I forgot to put this guy on. And while it may seem fairly pointless and some of you may not even consider removing everything to put this back in, I'm showing you how to do it the right way. I did it the wrong way. Let's do it the correct way by putting this back where it goes. So, we'll pop this foam piece right back into place here where we found it. And now let's proceed with replacing the plenum again. <laughs> All right, so these four studs need to go in first. I should be better at this the second time around because I've already done this once. But we'll get all the hoses and everything out of the way can't let that drive or passenger side drop in. My legs are getting so tired of squatting on this winch. Essentially what you've got to do, get the lines out of the way over here, you gotta lift this up. But there's a bracket over here on the passenger side that can be pretty difficult to work around. So you gotta kinda of pry that up. When these plenum bolts drop down, they kinda of make it immobile. So you have to put those up and out of the way. I need this up and out of the way so I can move this plenum around. And I don't wanna move those gaskets around, which is the important thing here. I can get this where it needs to go. Which is right there. All right, now we get that foam piece in, plenum is back on. There are two 10 millimeter nuts here. I gotta stop crouching on the winch for a while because my legs are about to quit on me. 
two 10 millimeter nuts there, two 10 millimeter nuts back here. And then two 10 millimeter nuts way over on the other side that hold the heater core hard lines in place. Let's grab our 10, tighten all six of these. Okay, two more to go. All right, now unfortunately I have to climb back up, but we've got uh, the four T20 Torx bits we have to tighten down. Starting with this front guy here. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. And then that back one, I said I was gonna grab swivel socket for and I didn't so we're gonna do it the old-fashioned way by using a short socket and the t20 and then I'll use the quarter-inch ratchet and then we'll get back there and hand tighten it first okay. all right those are tight just double check here yep nice and tight and now we can tighten these three eight millimeters along the top. Okay, we've got a lot of stuff to reconnect here. Um, still have four screws remaining, so we'll put those four screws in first and then we'll start reconnecting stuff just to make sure everything is reattached before we start plugging everything back in. Uh, two of the screws are going to connect that wiring harness on the passenger side. There's a bracket there, so these are 10 millimeters. We'll get these started here. That's my head hitting the hood again. Okay, those two are tight. Now there's a second piece of foam that goes on the back of the plenum here. We'll get this popped into place. And there are brackets that go here. And these 10 millimeter screws go right in here. We'll snap the foam back into place and hide those bolt heads just like that. Now we can start plugging things back in. We'll start with these, just get this hooked up here and snapped into that lower rung. This one can get snapped into the upper rung. This is the intake tube and the PCB here. I'm not going to fully hook up the intake because there's stuff to plug in still down here. Plug this guy in right here nice and happy okay and now we've got to plug things back in all these guys got your mass airflow reconnected we've got uh, this christmas tree clip can go back in it's right here this one is for our throttle body this will go back in right here and then we've got our air intake temperature sensor snapped right back on our axle breather can go right back up around here eventually I would like to re relocate this axle breather tube just because that's not very high and as you know this Jeep kind of went underwater so someday we'll relocate that hopefully someday soon if I have time get the intake tube tighten back down here Intake tube is secured. Everything's plugged back in. A few of these Christmas tree clips broke because they were just so brittle. Um, I know I popped a couple over here as well. So there's one on the wiring harness that we can put back in place. Uh, we still have one more tube over here. This one goes to our brake booster. 
plugs right in on the side of the intake. There we go. We've got that plugged in, just kind of a second check here. I had to take a break to let my phone charge, so I was really in the zone earlier, and now I'm kind of not. Let's see. That's plugged in, plugged in, plugged in, plugged in, reconnected. Plenum is all bolted back on. Spark plugs are all in, obviously. Over here, everything that was unplugged is plugged back in. Tight, tight. Axle breather, those are in, 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 in. Yeah, yeah, so we're all good. And now the final piece of the puzzle that's remaining is reconnecting our battery here. Drop that on there. This little piece goes over here. And then we've got this acorn-shaped nut that you should never attach an accessory to on either terminal. Put that on and tighten down, and then we'll fire this thing up. All right, so all six spark plugs are changed. Now we just have to fire it up and see if it runs. gentlemen is how you change the spark plugs on a 2012 and up Jeep JK with a 3.6 liter Pentastar engine. It's not a 30 minute job like it used to be. Things have gotten a little more complicated as engines have become more complex. There's a lot of unsnapping sensors and unplugging vacuum lines and pulling intakes. Seems like overkill to me but that's how they designed it. Anyways I hope you guys found this video informational. If you're following along and you find something out of place, or maybe I did something wrong, leave a comment down below, give this video a like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crawl TV. You can turn that little bell on up in the corner for notifications. And um, follow us on other social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, you name it. We have a rev kit, it's revkit.com slash crawltv, and you can see every mod that's on this Jeep. And that wraps it up for today's episode. So we will see you on the next one when we cover everything that it took to get this Jeep to where it is now after swamping it completely underwater. We'll catch you then. Bye.